Good morning, YouTube. I am here in the beautiful Silver Jack Reservoir, and I wanted today to walk you through my 6x17 film camera. Now, you'll probably see me using this camera a lot in the coming months, probably the next couple of videos. I've been using it extensively here uh, in Silver Jack. So I just kind of wanted to walk through this camera because it's a little bit interesting and it's not like a lot of the other 6x17 film cameras out there. I actually sold my Fuji GX617 to buy this because I was so happy with the camera that I decided I no longer needed the Fuji. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to walk you through this camera, the components, what I like, what I don't like. And then we're going to go on a quick hike and shoot some sunset photography from a beautiful ridgeline overlook where I'm going to be using this camera and I'll show you how I load the film how the camera operates and then the results from the camera as well. But let's start with a brief overview of the camera. The first thing that I love about this camera is that it is machined from a solid block of aluminum. It is heavy, which sucks for hiking, but it is sturdy. Um, I don't have any concerns about dropping this or damaging it. I throw it in a pack and it has lasted me years and it is rock solid. So I really like the build quality, although I do wish it was a little bit lighter. Um, so just like any other 6x17 camera, we have our 6x17 roughly opening in the front, and then we have these handles here. You can actually put a shutter release through here um, and shoot this handheld. I have done this before, and I will be doing this in a future video at Cotto Lake. I plan to take this on a kayak and shoot some fall photography from the boat. Um, probably not a great idea, but I'm doing it. So <laughs> that's that. Uh, I love the fact that this can be used handheld. No different with the GX617, you could do the same thing, but just something I wanna point out. When people uh, here um, see these large film cameras, they think they have to be on tripod. Not necessarily true, depending on the conditions. Now, the other part that I wanna point out is that we have three hot shoes on top. Now, this is great because you could have a bunch of different accessories. You could put the viewfinder, which we'll talk about shortly. You can put a uh, bubble level, and you can also put a range finder. Um, and this would be helpful if you're doing close-up photography. I just use a um, laser viewfinder, which is um, not mounted to the camera. So I haven't had a need to use it, but I like that they have three available on top if you want to use additional accessories. Now, the back of the camera, <laughs> there's only two things about this camera I don't like, one of which I hate, and it's this. The window to actually see where you are in your frames has this little red glass, um, which is good for black and white, but not necessarily color. So you usually wanna open this and close it as fast as you can, just so you can pick your frame and then move on. There's no nubby. <laughs> it's like, it's damn near impossible to open and close this thing. So when I'm trying to shoot quickly, this infuriates the crap out of me. Now, what I think I'm gonna end up doing is using some epoxy to put, um, a little rubber knob or something on there. I, I don't know how to fix it. This infuriates me. It's a small thing, but it really, in practice, makes a huge difference. Now, when you open the back of the camera here, you have the pressure plate, which holds your film flat. Um, and this is where there's another key difference between this camera and the GX617, is that the film is gonna go from right to left rather than left to right. So when you're rotating to advance the film, you're using a knob on the left, which is a little counterintuitive, I think, because uh, pretty much everything else I use was the opposite direction. So just something that I wanted to call out. <clears throat> when we get in the field later, I'll load some film and show you a little bit more about that. Now, I wanna talk about why I chose this system and got rid of the GX617. It's lens selection. <laughs> The, uh, this is still manufactured. You can still buy these today, which is fantastic. The GX617 le left production, I don't know, 30 years ago. So finding lenses for the GX617 are difficult and they're very expensive. And you're still limited to 90, 105, 180, and 300, um, which is very limiting. I can use any large format lens within reason here. And all I have to do is swap out the cone and use spacers. So for example, this is a 90 millimeter cone. I put a spacer on there and now I can use it with the 150. And here I have a 210 millimeter lens, which is mounted on a 180 millimeter cone. And with 50 millimeters worth of spacers, I'm able to mount this to the camera and achieve infinite focus. So being able to use the same, uh, same lenses that my 4x5 uses is a huge benefit. So that's the first advantage of this camera. The other major advantage for this camera are the ground glass options. I have two different versions of ground glass here. One has a grid, and I use this when I'm composing a scene, and the other one is just a brighter ground glass, and I use this to achieve critical focus. But here's the reason that I love this system. 
to interchange these uh, different ground glass, all you do is drop it on and they're magnetic and they stay in place, which is phenomenal. I can get a scene composed and focused in a matter of seconds. With the GX617, I was mostly using distance focusing because the ground glass was so fiddly and they're expensive and hard to find. You have to clip it on, mount it, it's a pain in the ass. These are near instant, you just pop on and off. Attaching lenses to the system is one of my other least favorite items. This uses lens cones and screws. The GX617 has screws that are permanently mounted to the body that hinge out. All you have to do is pop on the lens, put the screw in place, and there's two screws, one on either side. This has four screws that have to be individually tightened, and I can't tell you how many times I've been trying to switch lenses. I drop one of these, lose one of them. Um, and then of course, based on how many spacers you have, you have different length screws. So my bag for this has like 12 different screws. So it's very fiddly. Um, it can really be a pain trying to switch out lenses. Not usually an issue for me because usually if I'm set up for something like sunset, I'm sticking with the one lens, I'm locked in, I'm not going to be changing lenses uh, while I'm shooting. But just something to be aware of that if you're somebody who's going to be changing lenses a lot, this is a major pain point. I have one more thing that I want to talk about before we get this into the field and show how it works, and that's the viewfinder. The viewfinder for the GX617 is phenomenal. <laughs> I used to just keep it in my pouch and would take it out and look at scenes um, and line them up. Now, the downside of the GX617 is that each lens has a viewfinder. They're very hard to find, again, very expensive, and it's more stuff to carry. With that said, they're exceptional. They're very bright, you line it up, very easy to see your scene, and it's dead accurate. The Photo Man, on the other hand, has this similar looking unit to the GX617, and then you have these individual slides that you pop in, and you have one of these for every lens. Now, I ordered one for my 90, 150, and 210, and you can see here that they're just different size slots. And if you notice, this one is a six by 12, not a six by 17. So that's, that's a whole nother annoyance on its own, but they give me a general idea. If you get your eye in the right place, you could see your scene. Quite frankly, what I've done is I've stopped carrying this and I just use my iPhone with a viewfinder app and it's much more accurate, much easier to use. And with a hot shoe mount, I could just pop it on top of the camera. So this is an annoyance, but it's not really a big deal because of the iPhone, um, which I always have with me. I really don't need the viewfinder but it's definitely nowhere near as good as the GX617 viewfinder. But okay, that's enough jibber jabber about the mechanics. Let's go ahead and get in the field and see how this bad boy works. Well, I promised you a gorgeous sunset location, and I think this certainly fits the bill. This scene is beautiful this time of year because not only do you have these peak yellow aspens in the foreground, Chimney Rock, which is the main subject of the composition, faces almost perpendicular to the setting sun, so it catches that last bit of that beautiful sunset light. We were so fortunate to also get fresh snow on the peaks and some beautiful clouds in the sky. But my favorite part of this composition are the way these aspens line up against the pine trees all along the ridge, which is the perfect leading line into our main subject of Chimney Rock. But let's go ahead and get some film in the camera and see how this looks with Provia 100. The very first thing that I always do when I set up my 6x17 camera is I'll use my cell phone as a level and put it on the front lens where it's a nice flat surface just to make sure that I'm completely level. I don't trust the bubble levels because even the slightest degree off is going to mean that you have to crop the final image which is never something that I want to do. Now look how bright and beautiful this ground glass is even without a dark cloth. I can see perfectly the image on the back of the ground glass and I can make my final adjustments as I compose the image. I'm using my jacket here 
as a dark cloth because for some reason I can never remember to put the dark cloth in the bag, <laughs> but this gets the job done. You can see here just how bright and beautiful those aspens are and why the 6x17 camera is perfect for scenes like this. So while I waited for the sunset, I set up my digital camera because I actually didn't think we were going to get the light and it wasn't going to be worth the film. So rather than loading film and being prepared, I didn't want to waste a roll, so I decided I was just going to shoot digital and I was never going to make this video. <laughs> and sure enough, the light started popping off and was exactly what I hoped for. And then I had to scramble like a moron to get the film loaded. But as you can see here, you load the film from right to left. And once you get it into the take up roll, you try not to crimp it like I did here. And then once you get the start line just past the first roll, you go ahead and close that door and you're good to go. Because the light ended up hitting differently than I had originally anticipated, I ended up needing to recompose the scene. So I used my iPhone viewfinder app because the film was already loaded, I can't use ground glass, and I kept tweaking using the 90 millimeter frame that you see here, and just kept moving until I had the best parts of the scene in the image. Okay, so in the video, you'll see that I set up for uh, the golden hour light, which is what you're seeing here. And then I also shot a roll right at sunset. Now this is the golden hour shots and I would love to know your thoughts, but I actually think I prefer this. I love how the aspens keep that nice warm color and I love this light here on the peaks. And in a minute, I'll grab the loop and show you the detail. But the most important thing is these clouds above the peaks. I feel like there's just an overall balance to this scene. I love this leading line here that I mentioned earlier. You follow the ridge and then the shadow from the low light on the horizon breaking right at that ridge just brings you right up to your subject right here, which I intentionally put on the right third of the image. And I think compositionally, this is exactly what I envisioned when I walked up on this scene and I don't think I would change anything about this image. In terms of metering, I metered for the highlights here, so I picked my brightest point, and I put it just shy of zone seven. The overall scene had about four and a half stops of dynamic range, so I was pretty confident I can get it on slide film. And you'll see here that none of my highlights are blown out and my shadows still retain plenty of detail. It's the opposite of what I would have done on color negative film, of course, I would have exposed for these shadows and made sure I wasn't blocking out any of my shadows. But in this case, with slide film, exposed for the highlights. Now let me go ahead and show you the sunset images. The color in the sky is beautiful and I love the orange light on the peaks. Honestly, I keep going back and forth on which set of images I prefer. I think though I prefer the contrast and overall balance of the earlier images, but this is absolutely gorgeous light. So you can see that these clouds have started to drift off over the peaks. And there's this open area above our main subject here and I just don't like that. So I think I prefer the scene on the right where you can see the clouds are pretty even across the sky with this big block of clouds just above these snow covered peaks. So again, you just have this compositional element where you follow the ridge and your eye immediately goes to the subject. And then you have this interest and balance off on the left. Whereas in this image, I just feel like your eye isn't drawn in the same way because my eye is drawn to this open space up here, which is our brightest part of the image. And I just don't like that. But let me go ahead and grab the loop because I want to show you the detail in this image. This light and detail on the peaks with the shadows on the back of Chimney Rock is just gorgeous. And I love these snow-capped peaks on the left and how they're just getting that little kiss of light, not so much to distract you from the subject, but the perfect accent for the image. And of course, these aspens in the foreground, it's just overall the perfect Colorado fall landscape for me. All right, well, that's gonna do it for me in this video. I hope you enjoyed the video and the images. And if you did, please consider giving a like and subscribing to the channel. But other than that, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I get out there, make some images.